the team from Quorum, and I'd just like to put on record our thanks to them for all of the work they do. I can do a question. Lord Moylan. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. My Lords, the Government is grateful to the UN Special Rapporteur's interest in this important matter and has considered her letter carefully. A response was sent on the, 20, on the 19th of December 2023 and is published on the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights website at ochchr.org. The IPP Action Plan aims to promote sentence progression for all serving IPP sentences and provisions in the Victims and Prisoners Bill will, over time, reduce the number subject to that sentence. My Lords, I thank my noble and learned friend, and I apologise that my question was tabled quite by coincidence on the day that the Government actually issued its response to this letter. But may I ask him, um, may I ask him, does he accept the evidence submitted to the uh, Justice Select Committee in the other place, uh, and referred to by the Special Rapporteur, that the mental health problems caused by the IPP sentence itself multiply the difficulties that these prisoners face in obtaining release, and that therefore the Government would be wholly justified in considering any legislation in treating them as a special case uh, with particular needs uh, and trying to assist them to obtain uh, the discharge of the sentence. My Lords, the Government would accept that there are certain special mental health issues in relation to a number of these prisoners. Those are being tackled as far as we can within the existing system, and the action plan to which I've just referred uh, contains provisions in that regard, particularly in relation to improved psycholo psycholo psychological services and better support for uh, prisoners on, um, on licence so as to avoid later recall. I would not accept the second part of the question that it follows that we need special legislation to deal with this. To the noble Lord Moylan for his continued campaigning on this issue, um, and, and, and we're grateful to the government for responding at such length to, uh, to the rapporteur. If everything in the garden, the IPP garden, is so rosy in relation to indeterminately de detained people, some of whom would have only got a sentence of months for their actual crime. If everything's so rosy, why did the government abolish this sentence in the first place? And why did Lord Clark, as late as 2016, call the threshold that prisoners have to meet to secure their release both ridiculous and absurd? I wouldn't accept that the, and I do, do not assert, that everything in the garden is rosy. This uh, area is one of the acute dilemmas, perhaps the most acute dilemma, faced by the, uh, by the Ministry of Justice. Your Lordships will be aware that IPP prisoners are being addressed in part four of the Victims and Prisoners Bill currently before Parliament, which we will shortly discuss in detail in committee, and I am meeting noble lords on Thursday to take that discussion further. I know that the time not come. Has the time not come to enact a presumption? I'm so sorry, Kenneth, you're getting in. Forgive me. <laughs> sorry, okay. <laughs> my, my lords, uh, this isn't just a major problem in the system. It's a major disgrace to the British justice system that these thousands of people are being kept in this way. Uh, when I persuaded my then cabinet colleagues to abolish this, the, the IPP system uh, because it was working so badly, Unfortunately, I wasn't able to persuade them to change the application of the licensing system in the ordinary way to these prisoners. I, I'm glad the government's now contemplating action. I look forward to the legislation, but it's taken years. And will they consider something drastic, such as when prisoners are released on license, the license period should be for a much shorter period than usual, because at the moment people are being returned for quite minor breaches of licence to the disproportionate consequence of an indeterminate sentence that may keep them in prison for life. Why can't they be released on licence for 12 months and thereafter be subject to the usual criminal law for the protection of the public? Will the Minister consider that and every other suggestion that's flowing into him from the campaigners? Well, Lord John LeBaire, aware that the Victims and Prisoners Bill reduces the qualifying licence period from 10 years to 3 years, 
with a presumption of termination at that point, an automatic termination two years thereafter if there is no recall in the meantime. A recent report by His Majesty's uh, Inspector of Probation found that there were no cases where recall was inappropriate. None of the cases examined found that the recall was inappropriate, <coughs> but that in some cases, further additional support uh, in the community might have avoided the need for recall. And that has led to a number of recommendations, all of which the government has accepted. Served on the Justice Committee in the, my Lords, when I served on the Justice Committee in the Scottish Parliament in 2005, I recall that Scotland chose a different path than England and Wales when it was introduced by the Labour government in 2005. And it was right that they were abolished in 2012. But the UN Rapporteur's figures make very sober reading when it stated that for those 97% uh, of those who are still imprisoned are now two years beyond the tariff and 46% are 10 years beyond the tariff where rehabilitation was designed to be an integral part of the sentencing. So what are the obstacles from the government for implementing the Justice Committee in the Commons' recommendation endorsed by the UN Rapporteur for a resentencing exercise and rehabilitation now being put forward? What are the obstacles to this exercise happening so we can finally put to bed what has been a very sorry exercise? Lords, I think I have explained this matter several times before to your Lordships, but in brief, the situation is this. We have 1,200 prisoners who have never been released. Almost all of those have come several times before the parole board, who each time has decided they are not safe to release. Any resentencing exercise would inevitably either aim at or result in possibly a thousand persons being released who are not safe to release. The uh, cohort includes many violent and sexual offenders who are particularly difficult to manage in the community. The government feels it cannot take that risk and it should not raise expectations, it should manage the situation by preparing the remaining prisoners for safe release. My lords, my lords. When IPP uh, uh, sentences were in place, the offender received a minimum tariff. And when the offender went to prison, uh, an offender manager, who is a probation officer, wrote a sentence plan. And that same uh, uh, probation officer would also review that plan. Can the minister say with confidence that all the elements of the sentence, the sentence plans which are currently in place can be completed and can be completed in a reasonable time? Lord, it's a very good question, if I may say so to your lordships, and a strengthened action plan, a strengthened sentence plan for each prisoner, each IPP prisoner, is an essential part of, the, of the, the wider IPP action plan. That is currently being worked on at the moment so that the, each IPP prisoner still in custody will have a personalised, updated and hopefully effective sentence plan with the aim of eventually leading to their release if that is at all possible. I should say that the newly established IPP Pro Progression Board, which is dealing with this matter, now includes stakeholder representatives who met in September last, met again just before Christmas and will meet again in March when we will report uh, a full update on how the action plan is progressing. My Lord, may I reinforce the suggestion? I think it's this side, in fact. May I reinforce the suggestion made by my noble friend, Lord Clark? Has the time not come to provide a presumption that all IPP prisoners who have served the tariff should be released unless there is robust evidence tendered to the parole board that they are unsafe to be released? Well, Lords, I think that is in effect the present position. The government has no interest in holding these prisoners, especially given the pressure on the prison system generally. The government's fear, worry and concern is public protection for the reasons that I've given. The, my Lords, Special Rapporteur Dr Alice Edwards, who I had the, the ple pleasure and the privilege to meet uh, last month, 
with the Justice Union's parliamentary group stated forcefully, and I would like to quote this please, the UK as a society with a strong rule of law tradition has measures in place to protect the community after individuals are released. So why therefore does the noble Lord Minister think these measures will be ineffective in the case of IPP uh, prisoners? The government replied in detail to the learned special rapporteur over 13 pages in our letter of the 23rd of December, to which I refer your lordships, and I look forward to further debate and discussion on this matter when we're dealing with the Victims and Prisoners Bill. I beg leave to ask the question standing in my